We've responded fast, we've adjusted, we've pivoted as necessary to really get an understanding of the impact of COVID. How do we actually address COVID? How do we treat COVID? How do we diagnose it? Um, we've also been really productive during this particular time. We seeded all of our community with about 1.3 million in funding, and that's been leveraged to over 60 million in extramural awards, over 200 papers, 750 citations. This involves mental health, this involves data analysis, this involves clinical research, this involves treatments and diagnosis. And that's just a testament to our group to be able to take a small amount of money that we've given and invest that and actually then make big discoveries. Our community has stepped up making discoveries that are going to have major impact on health and well-being, on societal outcomes, on the environment. And so that's what gets me up every day. It's just exciting to come and partner with all of these colleagues across the University of Utah. As scientists, we owe it to the public to explain what's happening, what, what types of things we're discovering. And animation is incredibly effective at being able to communicate these very complex and very tiny things that are happening um, that, we're, that we're researching. My name is Janet Awasa, and I'm an assistant professor of biochemistry. In general, my lab is interested in visualizing molecular processes, and we do this primarily using animation. We're really thinking about uncertainty a lot. And so I think one of the exciting things is really using this animation and the annotation tools that go with it to describe what that uncertainty is um, and to really make it transparent. That's the way science moves forward. I was uh, you know, following the news like everybody else and I saw how devastating it's becoming. And uh, it occurred to me that the work that we did and were doing at that point for Zika virus can be uh, directly uh, applied to detecting uh, COVID-19. It was really interesting for me to understand what this virus is, whether it has a charge, you know, electrical charge, why its size changes depending on different environment, what is its exact shape. What we do is we detect the whole virus uh, together and it has these spiking proteins. If there is a spherical particle that has those spiking proteins, S1 and S2, and comes to our sensor, and if the size is right, and if its electrical properties are correct, then we decide that this is a virus. So that is the innovation. It's the most exciting thing is to enable people to have a control on their life and, and uh, uh, monitor their environment to make sure that it's safe or not. We had 20 days <laughs> to collect the data, do the analysis, and write it up. And everyone agreed, yes, we have to do this. We honestly really wanted to know if the media was right in saying that black and brown communities were suffering from COVID because they were non-compliant, because they are not following the mandates of public policy as far as social distancing and masking. Overall, we found that non-Hispanic Blacks um, were dying at disproportionate rates from COVID because they were holding more essential worker positions. We wanted to be able to give voice to that and to be able to demonstrate that it wasn't necessarily a personal choice, but oftentimes a social economic status that um, in their efforts to care for themselves and their family, um, they were having increased exposure. I feel very fortunate to be able to do research that matters, not just to an institution, but that matters to my community, that matters to me as an individual. That means a lot. Research is fundamentally that thing that keeps us going. If you think about what is going to actually impact us and how we treat COVID, we diagnose COVID, how we live through COVID, how we do post-COVID, I mean, this is the place you want to be because this is where everybody gets together and things are not only additive here, they're synergistic and discoveries are made that impact society. Whether you're directly in the University of Utah community or you're a family member that's associated, a friend or somebody who lives in the community, you can rely on the University of Utah to be on the forefront.